As part of the Career Growth Made Easy podcast, we explore different areas that can help you grow both personally and professionally. Today, we're going to talk about why you need emotional intelligence, what it is, how it works, and the benefits of understanding it. I was an engineer and in 2008 lost my job due to the economic collapse. Jobs were scarce. I didn't know where to turn to get help updating my resume. Online services and coaches charge hundreds, even thousands of dollars. I took matters into my own hands and learned how to craft interview winning resumes. Shortly later, I landed a job with a Fortune 500 company. I have helped many achieve similar success. Now I share my tips to create interview winning resumes, interviewing excellence, and high performance growth strategies on my podcast, Career Growth Made Easy. Welcome back to the Career Growth Made Easy podcast. I am your host, Craig Ansell. For today's show, we're talking about why you need emotional intelligence. It's different than IQ or intelligence quota. It's not how smart you are, but it's about how well you communicate and pick up on human communication signals. I recently read an article during my studies, and it talked about the phrase, I'm seeing red. I found this interesting, so I continued to read on. I'm seeing red has now become a staple for certain executives during meetings. They and their staff know that if somebody gets caught up in their emotions about a particular topic or subject, the statement I'm seeing red applies. It's essentially like using a stop sign and halting your conversation or presentation until whoever made the statement can reflect, take a pause, and get back into logical-minded thinking. So I thought that was quite interesting, and it wouldn't hurt if we explored it more. I would say the difference about I'm seeing red is it's the difference between acting with emotion or acting logically. Now, that sounds funny in itself, but let's explore that a little bit. Having emotional intelligence allows you to have the ability to communicate with a broad range of people. And also, it's the ability to read people without speaking to them, kind of like reading their poker face, if you will. You can also pick up on trigger words, which I'll talk about briefly. Now, all those things might sound interesting, but we need to understand what emotional intelligence is, right? So from a human anatomy standpoint, our emotional intelligence starts at the bottom and back of our brain, at the spinal cord. Your main sensory inputs from your sight, smell, hearing and taste, as well as touch, enter here. These inputs travel along your brain's super highway towards the front of your brain. There are two main stops, though, for this input to travel to. The first one, which is also the shortest distance from the spinal cord, is where you process your feelings. This is the central part of your brain, and it is called the limbic system. The next stop after traveling through your limbic system is for the information to travel forward to the rational part of your brain. This is where I feel we always get, or excuse me, many times we can get fouled up. Notice I said there were two main stops for this information to travel to. Ideally, most of your sensory inputs should make it to the final destination, the logical portion of your brain. But many times, these sensory inputs never do. If you've ever heard someone say, they let their emotions get the best of them, or he or she was emotionally hijacked, this is a perfect example of what happens. How about if you hear or read something that's emotionally scaling, something that just really gets you to your core and irks you, makes you red? You're also getting emotionally hijacked or preparing to be. The way this um, pathway works in your neurological system and your brain is quite interesting because if we're going to go on a, uh, on a trip, for example, we plan out things along the route that we're going to stop by and see. Well, unfortunately, the first pathway and the shortest pathway is to our emotional side of our brain, right? The limbic system. So what we have to learn is to become aware of our emotions, our emotional intelligence. It's not only about being strong and communicating well with others, but we first must know ourselves as well, right? We have to know our emotions, our feelings. I said something earlier about the phrase or statement trigger words. 
I was involved in a project several years ago, and I wasn't aware what was happening to me. But there was a particular person on the customer side that was actually being triggered by one or more of the words I was using in my conversations with them, and which I would normally speak to for a period of several years because they were my main interface. I wasn't able to see at the time that I was actually using words that caused them to be emotionally triggered. Even though this person, this customer, held a strong leadership role in one of the companies I was working for, they had two particular words at least that caused them just to get emotional, very loud, very assertive, or even aggressive. And I think in one time, I think I heard them pound their fist on the table through the phone. At least that's what I believe I heard. And what I didn't know was there are certain ways that you can bring up words or work around them to help communicate with others without causing these triggers to happen. But regardless of what those words were for this particular customer, I think the biggest message today talking about why you need emotional intelligence, it can help you to perform better in your, your performance at work as well as your personal lives. Having awareness of your emotional intelligence, first how it works, that little super pathway, super highway in your brain, and then knowing that the first stop for the data, the sensory input in our bodies is to our emotional side, can make us more aware of how this whole work, the whole, whole process works. The next thing is that as the emotions, or rather the information, the sensory information travels through your brain and passes through the limbic system, not as a destination, but as a temporary stop, and it continues onward, it's more likely, the data is more likely to reach your logical side of your brain up front in your head. So thinking about that, we have to be aware that our data is flowing continuously in our minds, processing information, inputs, sensory inputs, and that we, I, I guess by being aware we know that there are some ways we can be foiled, right? We can be naturally emotionally hijacked simply by that short pathway. Once we learn these triggers for ourselves and feelings where something causes us to grit our teeth, maybe we feel flush or red in the face, or we notice ourselves acting funny, start tapping our hands out of nervousness, chewing a pencil, um, what else, making a fist perhaps, those are things that trigger emotions, whatever that may be. For some of us, it could be traffic. For some of us, it could be working with uh, different people in our organization. Or in my case, it was a particular customer that I was actually upsetting using trigger words. And it was just through the normal course of my speech, my communication, that caused this person to react that way. At first, for me, I wasn't aware of what was happening. I was responding to the words and statements the customer made, and I did see that they were getting upset, but I didn't understand the underlying cause. Once I learned to work around the trigger word the customer had, I then was able to communicate very similar or same messages, but by not using those trigger words. Now, you might say to yourself, that's great, Craig, for you, but what about me? Well, here we go. Knowing that the shortest path is the limbic system, the emotional side, and that there's a longer path actually to the final destination, we would hope in many cases, to our logical side, we can start to work on this on a daily basis. Becoming aware of that, becoming aware of your own feelings will help you grow incredibly in your personal and professional roles. People many times have told me that they felt a certain emotion coming on, a certain feeling, or when they work around certain people, certain customers, certain environments, they, um, I guess, get triggered and start to react in a certain way. They can feel their body tensing up. I don't know if this has happened to you. But the thing was, they couldn't figure out what was the causing factor. They just knew why it was happening. So listening to today's show, I can share with you some of my examples as well as some of theirs. And it's really about the awareness, right? How are you feeling? Is there a particular person, situation, task, activity, time of day? Um, I don't know, a particular report that's due every week that really causes you to get stressed out emotionally and, and kind of anxiety, worried, nervous, changing your habits. If there's things that you avoid, these also can be things that trigger your emotional intelligence because, again, you're working through your feelings in the limbic system as opposed to working through logic. Um, what's a good example? Let's say that at the end of the week, closing day is Friday, that you have to have a report done for your management. You know that reports due every week. 
Have you ever put something off even though you know the deadline was coming due and it was a hard, set deadline? I'm raising my hand. I have. I just didn't understand why I was doing things like that. You might say, if it was earlier on in my career, I just don't like doing the report, or I'll have time to do it later. Basically, those were excuses. Knowing that I don't like to do the report, that's fine. That's you know human nature. You have th- some things you prefer and some things you don't. But really, you have to realize if it's a part of your task, part of your responsibility, especially as you grow into supervision and leadership, that you need to be responsible for those activities, and they need to get done. And as I started to process the report in a more data-based mindset, in a more logical-based mindset, it was easier to do, recognizing it was part of the job and that I was counted on to turn that in on time. So once we have awareness of how our brain's um, pathways travel the information to and from, that helps us know ourselves better. From there, then, we can take this same information and share it with others and use it with others for better conversations. So this I'm seeing red statement, it wouldn't mean anything in in a leadership meeting or in a boardroom setting if the person that used the words didn't explain what that meant, what kind of trigger, what kind of response they were expecting. But once they educated the team on emotional intelligence and that they were into their emotional zone versus in their feeling zone versus their logical side, everybody knew to pause. I think that's pretty darn impressive, especially for leadership or executives to use those statements. It takes a really strong skill set, especially an emotional skill set to recognize where you're going and it's somewhere you don't want to be. We have leaders and we have executives for a reason. They're typically the ones making the top decisions for a company, for a brand, and they can impact hundreds, if not thousands of people's lives, as well as, you know, staff members, as well as your customers. So you don't want people working off of emotions when they make decisions. So if you've ever received an email, uh, heard something, and it was addressed towards you, and it just really scathed you, it really irritated you, that is when your emotions will peak, very likely. And that is where, like I mentioned earlier, you can get emotionally hijacked. The best thing to do in those situations when you come, you feel it coming on is to put the information down. If it's written, if it's email, pause, hold on to that, take a break, especially when you respond. If it's in written form, it gives you a little bit of time as opposed to being an actual conversation and you have to really strengthen your skills with regards to processing information. With the written form, read it through. You might feel yourself getting upset with those emotions I mentioned earlier. For each of us, we have our own ways of, of reacting to things. And then maybe take a brief break, go get a water, take around the walk around the block, something like that. Come back to it and try to pull the logic out of the, the document. Although there, although there may be some emotional words tied to it, some um, stinging words are tied to it, maybe even a, a, a written attack on you, which is unprofessional, the bottom line is if you have a job to do and to respond, try to pull out the data. Now, I know it's easier said than done, but that's one way to do it is take a break and try to pull out the data out of the email and respond to it professionally. Now, in my opinion, if this is somebody you work with on a regular basis and they typically respond in these emotional ways, you might want to set a meeting with them, talk to your supervisor about a particular situation, what they might recommend, and see if you could come to an agreement on how to resolve this. But in reality, if you respond professionally, you're taking the right stance, in my opinion. Now, the next thing would be, if you're in a live situation, a one-on-one conversation, or you're in an you know, office now that we're returned to office work um, as COVID starts to taper down, you might be involved in situations where there's larger groups present and a particular trigger word or trigger statement is said in the room that irritates you, bothers you, or that you are uh, given some negative feedback, some constructive feedback in a room. It's really easy to defend ourselves and jump back at someone and try to, but here's what I meant to say, or I really worked hard on this and you just kind of just jump right back at them. But the best part about this is it's a practice thing with career growth made easy. Every episode we go through is a way to learn for us. Every experience we have personally, professionally can be a learning experience if we let it. So it could be on the way to work. You stop and get coffee or a drink, or you're at the gas pump and you interact with someone. Every time we have a chance to interact with someone, it's another opportunity to learn from. 
So as you start to feel your own emotions come to play and you work through them based on what le- what emotion you feel and its intensity, that higher intensity will tell you that it is more concerning to you. It is a higher level of alert your body is on. It's almost as if it's going into the you know fight or flight mode, right? That's the emotional side of your brain as opposed to the logic side where you try to solve problems and respond in a logical way. So as you get to work and you're in those meetings, if something starts to bother you and starts to boil your blood, as they say, and you're getting tense, almost some people say, I can feel the hair on my arm standing up, right? Be aware of those uh, feelings, those emotions, and see if you can, what was the trigger? Just write one or two words down. Was it a particular uh, point of content that was released or stated? Was it something directed towards you, towards your team that you're responsible for? What was it? And then work through that so that you can respond to it in a um, reduced emotional state, in a more logical state. You know, in the beginning, if you were on a call and it was an internal call, meaning there were no external paying customers on the call, I sometimes have said, I don't have an answer for this now. I need some time to process it. I'll get back to you. That worked initially. And then I had to grow into saying, I will get back to you by the end of the day or by this time, right? Start putting sunsets on things. You can't just say, I'll get back to you and leave it broadly open. Initially you can, but as you grow in your position, your responsibility, you're going to need to have deadlines set for your responses. Then as time went on and I grew my emotional intelligence, especially my awareness of it, I was able to start responding more appropriately in meetings than feeling attacked and going on the defensive and raising my, you know, raising my firewall, so to speak. It's not easy. It certainly takes time, but there are great books out there and training courses on emotional intelligence. And hopefully this was a primer for you talking about why you need emotional intelligence, what it is and how important it is. Later in the week on my social media, I'm going to share a book or two that I've read and that I really recommend. One of them is a very quick read, easy to understand, and gets straight to the point to complement what we discussed today. I think there's even some uh, tables on there about looking at your emotions and then ranking them from low, medium, high. So it tells you the intensity and basically helps you understand why you're feeling the way you are. And that book has tremendously helped me over the years. So I'll be referencing that book on my social media later this week. Also, I have another episode on emotional intelligence that was much earlier on in my showtime. And I'll see if I can find that and I will drop a link to that in the show notes as well. I hope today's show, talking about emotional intelligence, helped you, gave you some different vision into how our bodies work and how we can start to work to feel and understand our emotions and how our logic works in our bodies and brains. But also, once we start to become more familiar with and get stronger, more strongly in control of our emotions, and maybe even master our emotions, we can start to work on communicating better with others. Not only can we refrain from jumping into the emotional side of things in the limbic system, that will help us to reduce the fight or flight experience we have where we get emotionally hijacked and go into battle stations mode, right? It will give us the chance to let the data, the sensory input flow to the front of our brains where we use our logic. And that will make you a stronger person, a stronger employee, potentially someday a stronger supervisor, manager, or director, because it's those people that can handle intense emotional settings or intense settings where, you know, a lot of activities are going on, such as first responders, people in leadership roles, that those are the ones we need in the front line, so to speak. When someone else is getting triggered by their emotions, maybe there were some particular words that upset someone in your group, you might be able to step in and recognize that and deconstruct that for them someday, helping them start to understand their emotions and their emotional intelligence. With the power of podcasting, I was able to pause, check into my podcast editorial calendar, and I found episode number 40, Becoming Aware of Your Emotional Intelligence. It's an entry level into learning about your emotional intelligence, and today's show would complement that because I went into a little bit more detail about real-life situations. So I think listening to episode 40 would be a great compliment and help you dive in further if you're interested. I am Craig Ansell, and you are listening to the Career Growth Made Easy podcast. I cannot thank you enough from the bottom of my heart for being one of my listeners. If you haven't yet, do me one favor, if you will. Please go to Apple Podcasts or whatever player you're using and be kind enough to leave a review and some comments. This will help us not only grow and tailor our content, but let others 
but let others know what you're feeling and the value you're getting out of our shows. There are many choices, and we appreciate the fact that you took time to listen to our show today. God bless you. I will talk to you next week. Don't forget to check the show notes for any links that I discuss, and I look forward for you grabbing some of my social media content later this week and seeing what books I'm recommending on the topic. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our channel. New episodes every Monday. In the meantime, why don't you follow us on social media, at Craig Ansell on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. To book a coaching appointment, download our free guides, or join our email list, check out the links in the description below.